Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our RE seminar for this morning, um, using data and analytics to enhance industrial control system cybersecurity with Dr. Van Zang from the Nuclear uh, Engineering Department here at ET. So if you would just want to introduce yourself and then go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending my seminar. Uh, as I said, uh, my name is Fan Zhang. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the nuclear engineering department at uh, the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. And my topic today will be on my own research on using data analytics to enhance industrial control system cybersecurity. Before we get into that thought, I'd like to just explain why industrial cybersecurity is a field of research and why we are really on cybersecurity to maintain our normal life. As an example, when you're turning on the TV or turning on your faucet for water, you are relying on the idea that the water you drink and the electricity you use will keep going to your house. And really, that's where cybersecurity comes in and plays a very critical role. Because the reality is that the industrial processes that control the power plants and the water treatment plants are all computer controlled. So if a cyber attack manages to disable this computer system even for a few hours, the results can be bad for lots of people. And this isn't just a speculation. We have recorded instance where attackers have been successfully uh, in attacking industry facilities. The Ukraine power grid was attacked in 2016, for example. That attack, that attack caused almost 300,000 people to lose power for six hours. In another known attack, a water treatment plant was successfully attacked and the attacker tried to directly alter the chemical composition of the waters that people might have been drinking. Luckily, that attack was detected before anyone could be directly uh, affected. But I hope these attacks can give you a sense of how important protecting this system are. And today I'm going to be specifically talking about how we use data analytics to do that. So first, I will talk about uh, the overall cybersecurity background and the motivation of this research uh, in terms of a research language. Uh, and then I will present the cybersecurity solution platform um, I developed and uh, industrial control system ICS testbed we built for this research. And then I will show uh, three cyber attacks we conducted to the testbed. And then I will present the results and conclude my seminar. So first, let's look at a typical control system architecture as shown in this figure. Um, so uh, the level one contains the sensors uh, such as temperature sensors, pressure sensors, flow meters, and actuators such as pump, valve. And the level two contains some controllers such as program biological controller, PLC, uh, distributed control systems to take the sensor readings as input and uh, output some command to the actuators like speed up the pump. And the level three has the engineer workstation where the uh, plant operators sit here to uh, monitor some uh, operation uh, in the field and also issue some command to the field. And we also have human machine interface in this level. And there are some internal servers, uh, for example, data historian, which stores the uh, data acquired from the field. So all these three levels are uh, in the control network, or sometimes we call it operational network or process network. And above that, we have enterprise network, um, where the uh, staff uh, sit in and do some work management work or send emails or print things. Um, and uh, there is firewall deployed between the enterprise network and the internet to prevent the uh, threat from internet come into the enterprise network. And usually for uh, lots of plants, there are air gap deployed between the enterprise network and the process network. So network, uh, 
air gap is a network segregation method which um, you know you can set up one-way communication so that uh, no intrusions from enterprise network should be go to the control network um, today most of the industrial field have adopted digital technologies such as digital controllers and sensors or even wireless sensors because these technologies can make more precise control and more economical operation however these technologies bring cybersecurity challenge uh, as already shown by several cyber incidents or attacks. Uh, I will use three cyber incidents or attack happened in the nuclear history as example, because nuclear, uh, nuclear industry is one of the most highly regulated and safety industry to show that the industrial cybersecurity is needed to be enhanced. So the first example is a Davis Bassey nuclear power plant slammer worm uh, incident. In 2003, Davis Bassey nuclear power plant was infected by the slammer worm, which led to the safety parameter display system inaccessible to operators for four hours and 50 minutes. Um, the slammer worm was traveled from consultants network to the enterprise network and then to the control network. Even though this nuclear power plant had a firewall to protect the enterprise network from the internet, which would um, have prevented the slammer worm, uh, but the consultant created a connection behind the firewall to his office network probably for to make his work easier. Uh, but this opened the door for the slammer worm by bypassing the firewall. And since there is no firewall between the enterprise network and the control network by that time, the slammer worm traveled to the control network and infected the safety parameter display system. So this instance demonstrates that the enterprise network of a nuclear power plant connects to the internet may be exposed to the same threat that uh, target many unspecified system in conventional IT environment. And uh, although there are firewalls deployed in plants, the plants may still have a connection to the internet without knowledge. In August 2006, the Brass Ferry Nuclear Power Plant Unit 3 was shut down manually after a loss of both coolant pumps. So the main coolant pumps circulate cold water into reactor core, which is constantly generate heat. So if there's no cold water uh, constantly pumped into the reactor core, then reactor core will overheat and may cause core meltdown, which, which is a very severe accident. So once you lost the coolant pump, uh, a manual shutdown has to be performed to sh safe shut down the whole power plant. So what caused this uh, manual shutdown is a broadcast storm. So the variable frequency drive, VFD, drove the, uh, the pump here. And there are also programmable logic controller PLCs can uh, control the condenser. Both of these devices had embedded microprocessors thus that allows them to communicate data over ethernet. And the Ethernet broadcast is a communication mechanism that every device in the network uh, receives all the broadcast packet and then determine which packet is meant for itself and ignores those packets and not by examining every packet. So when a bro uh, broadcast storm happens, the VFD and the PLC were flooded, so the coolant pump were not able to cool the reactor. Even though this cyber incident was not caused by a cyber attack, it shows a possible cyber attack scenario for a nuclear power plant. Together with the slammer worm we saw in the Davis Bassey power plant, the DOS attack to critical components such as VFD, which can disable the coolant pump to the reactor core uh, and the slam or warm at the same time could disable the operator's access to the safety parameter display system to prevent the awareness of the um, 
of the DOS attack, then it could be a very severe accident. So the third example is a cyber attack happened, probably lots of people have heard about it, which is a Stuxnet. It um, attacked the Iranian nuclear enrichment centrifuges in 2010. Uh, the malware was brought into the facility on a USB drive and exploited several zero-day vulnerabilities to inject its malicious code into, a Siemens P into Siemens POCs to speed up and slow down the centrifuges, causing them to wear out. Meanwhile, the malware fake sensor output to mask uh, the data from operators by sending normal behavior data. The Stuxnet proves that a sophisticated cyber attack does not require internet connection, so that the so-called air gap in nuclear power plant is not sufficient to prevent all the cyber attacks. And also the cyber attack could disrupt or fabric the monitoring system by false data injection to mask the abnormal behavior caused by ongoing cyber attack. Um, this figure shows uh, the timeline that I summarized uh, about the major ICS targeted cyber attacks since 2010, which shows that the number and the capability of ICS targeted attacks uh, uh, have grown rapidly. So this indicates that enhancing the cybersecurity of ICS is urgent. So you might want to ask that there are already very mature technology, cybersecurity technology in the IT world. Why don't we just adopt them to the ICS to enhance the cybersecurity of ICS? Uh, so the answer is there are lots of difference between ICS and IT in terms of cybersecurity. So first of all, the security objectives of ICS is a priority uh, ties in the order of availability, integrity, and confidentiality, while the IT objectives are prioritized in the order of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So um, the, the objectives order is different than uh, how you respond to the uh, cyber attack would be different. And also some of the common security tools used in the IT are not suitable in ICS. Because the ICS, of the, uh, ICS bandwidth are mainly occupied by control command and the field monitoring data. So the port scanning tool, which is a very common tool in the IT world, uh, cannot be used in the ICS, most of ICS, because it could even lead to the component DOS, since this occupies bandwidth as well. And the so ICS typically have very strict time requirements compared to the IT world. So the cybersecurity measures you deployed can't uh, disrupt the, this time requirement. And also most of ICS uh, and the devices were made 20 years ago and they are not easy to update or patch, which because when you update or patch it, it also could lead to the uh, denial of service. And this table also shows some other difference, such as communication protocols are different. Um, and for the penetrating test, the IT world can just do it, but for the ICS, usually no one do it to the real uh, plant. They do it for a test bed of the plant, but not every plant is building some test bed. Um, and also, uh, the, the compromise consequences are very different. In the IT world, uh, it's usually just business impacts such as financial loss or the reputation loss. However, in the ICS world, in addition to the business impact, it could be equipment damage, environment destroyed, such as if an oil plant leaks some oil to the environment, or even personal safety. Um, and among all the differences, there is one difference uh, which could, could provide some valuable insight to ICS. It is the data type. So in the IT world, we only have cyber data, which are host system data or network related data. However, in the ICS, in addition to the cyber data, we also have process data, which are the sensor data or the control command in the field. 
Uh, later, I will show how my research uses this valuable process data to add some uh, insight to the cybersecurity of the ICS. Also, another um, another issue existing in the uh, ICS uh, cybersecurity is uh, IT experts who monitor the cyber infrastructure and the OT experts who monitor the processes are largely independent. Uh, so this lack of a cross-disciplinary background may result in insufficient understanding of the whole scenario when a cyber attack happens. Therefore, enhancing the cybersecurity of an uh, uh, industry requires dedicated efforts in not only improve the digital safeguards, but also promoting cross-collaboration between the IT and OT team. Now let's move to the uh, solution platform I proposed. Uh, the platform consists of uh, several parts, data collection and extraction uh, system, uh, cyber attack detection system, cyber attack analysis system, cyber attack response system, and the main control room discipline system. Um, so to achieve this research, we also built a test bed. So the data collection and extraction system pulls four different types of data from the test bed. These four different types are uh, network data, network flow data, host system data. These three types are cyber data and the process data. And then the system fed these four types of the data into a cyber attack detection system, which contains three modules. Um, the module one is built on supervised classification model. Use selected network and host system data to detect no cyber attacks with historical patterns. This approach is proven to be successful for no um, attacks, but it is not able to detect cyber attack with new signatures and unknown attacks. Uh, then we have the module two, which applies unsupervised algorithms to the network flow data to detect new exploits that are not included uh, in the attack database uh, in the module one. For, for some advanced cyber attack that may not be detectable by monitoring cyber data, uh, such as an insider attack, maybe this insider has all the access all the privilege, so from the cyber data, you cannot see any um, normal. Then we proposed uh, module three, uh, which applies the in unsupervised model to the process data to detect any deviation from the normal operation. Uh, however, the process data deviation can also result from some operational event. Therefore, we have a cost analysis system to distinguish if the anomaly caused by, uh, anomaly detected by module three is from cyber attack or from component degradation. Uh, and then we have this cyber attack response system, which uh, can determine if the cyber attack uh, has to be isolated or that the plant can continue to operate or a safe shutdown has to be performed. And all the results will disappoint to the operator by the main control room um, discipline. So to, uh, to generate the data that needed for this research, we built this um, ICS test bed. Uh, which can, contains the physical world, which is a flow loop, and the cyber part, which is um, a supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA system. Um, so now let's move to see this ICS testbed first. So the testbed is a uh, uh, testbed contains three parts. The first part is a physical experimental facility which simulates the thermal hydraulic behavior of a typical two-loop nuclear power plant. Uh, and a lab view based uh, SCADA system, which performs control this uh, testbed and control this facility and also acquire data from this facility and uh, a local error network. Now I'm going to uh, play a video I made two years ago, uh, which introduces this uh, facility. Is the 
pump. This is the VF, which controls the pump. This is heat exchanger. This is upper water tank. This is the lower water tank. This is the carrier outlet for water and this is heat tank. And these are RPDs. The water enters heater from the bottom. Now let's look at the secondary loop. The fourth water comes from the building and then flows through an OA and then flows through the heat exchanger secondary side and then flows through the magnetic flow meter and then go back to the building. So hopefully this video gives uh, you a sense of uh, how the um, physical facility located in the lab looks like and the RTD I mentioned before is the uh, temperature sensors and the MOA is a um, uh, uh, motor operated valve. So in this test bed we have three controllers. Uh, we have one open loop controller to control the heater power and two proportional integral PI controllers to control the pump speed and the MOV uh, because in the primary loops the pump speed uh, decides how much flow rate it is in the primary loop and in the second loop this MOA can control the flow rate and by controlling this uh, pump and the valve we control the temperature uh, of the heater inlet and outlet at the set point. Now let's look at the cyber port. Um, so the cyber part has a SCADA system. Uh, it consists of data acquisition device, CDAC uh, 91884, I'll call it NHSE here, uh, and switch and engineer workstation. The lab view is installed in this engineer workstation to receive the process data and send control command to the flow loop actuators. So basically this NLI chassis is an um, interface of the sensors and the actuators in the flow loop I showed uh, and the uh, engineer workstation. And the cyber part also contains a uh, attacker PC which has a Kali Linux operating system to um, do some attack to the testbed. And we also have another uh, computer which uh, installs Argus collector to collect uh, network flow data. And this is how it looks in the lab. So this figure shows the normal operation of the um, flow loop. This just to give a sense that the flow loop uh, under normal operation can maintain the control uh, goal, which is maintain the heater inlet and outlet temperature at the set point. So here, uh, the heater power uh, has a step change from 77% to 100% of the no nominal power um, at the uh, observation 220. And we can see here as uh, uh, temperature values from different temperature sensors. And we can see uh, with this power change, the uh, temperature still maintains at their set point. And these two, uh, these two temperatures are from uh, the temperature in the second loop. So it uh, depends on the building temperature. That's why there is a, like, it's not totally steady. It's have some trend. But these are the temperatures we want to control at the set point. So we can see uh, the MOA and the VFD has um, uh, issued some command itself to to maintain this temperature at the set point. So this, uh, through this, I just want to say that the flow loop can uh, maintain the steady state under normal operation. And then uh, let's talk about the attack I did to the uh, test bed. The first scenario is a packet sniffing attack by um, Vizmay in the middle using uh, use a ether cap in Kali. Um, so it is a uh, ARP poisoning to the NLI chassis and the engineer workstation. As this figure showed, after doing the main middle, the attacker is able to see the whole communication between 
uh, these two holes to the uh, chassis and the engineer workstation. So uh, from this, we can know that packet sniffing gives the attacker the possibility to learn the traffic and emulate it for further um, attacks. The second scenario is a DOS attack to an chassis with a spoofed IP address using HP3 in Kali. Excuse me. Um, so we can see these are the data we collected due, uh, under the DOS attack. And we can see here, there are some like data loss due to this DOS attack. So um, this concludes that the DOS attack is able to make the service temporarily unavailable. So let's first look at the re, uh, uh, methodology and results from the module one. Recall that module one applies supervised learning to the host system data and network data. So the da uh, processed the data uh, and the selected variables are, select, uh, are divided into training and tested data. And the training data go through four different uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, key nearest neighbor, KNN, decision tree, bagging, and uh, uh, random forest. To, um, so we built four models based on the training data, and then we also optimize the data with their best hyperparameters. And then the test data is uh, coming to evaluate the build of the model by comparing the uh, uh, the detected class and the real class, so we can get the accuracy of the model. And this table shows the accuracy comparison of these four models. So the true positive means it is a cyber attack and the algorithm classified it as a cyber attack. So we know um, this value should be uh, as high as possible. Uh, so we can see here the KNN gives um, uh, highest to true positive. And for the false positive, it um, means uh, the, the uh, method or the classification model say it is a cyber attack, but it is wrong and it's not cyber attack. Uh, so we can see the back end random forest gives zero false positive which is very suitable for some applications that require false alarm be as low as possible, uh, which in the nuclear power plant, it is, a, it is a case because you don't want the operator to receive all the false alarms and do some action. Now let's look at the third scenario I did, uh, which is a false data injection. So first, the test was running under the normal situa uh, situation without any cyber attack, but the attacker could already gain the uh, access to the uh, local area network by bypassing uh, the intrusion prevention uh, systems before uh, or during this time, but didn't, um, didn't conduct any malicious activity and did not raise any alarm. And at time 600 seconds, the attacker launched a reconnaissance within the network to learn the network architecture, such as devices, IPs, or manufacturing. Uh, this step provides the attacker with information to develop the further attack. For example, if the attacker figure out the engineering workstation is a Dell workstation, the attacker can research the vulnerability of this uh, engineer workstation online, then attacker can use these vulnerabilities to further uh, attack the system. After network discovery and uh, attack development, the attacker launched the main middle attack at time 8.40 uh, second. Um, this allows the uh, uh, attacker to sit between the SCADA master and the slave without their awareness. Uh, at time 10.20, the attacker injected a malicious code to the SCADA master and then left the system. This malicious code uh, can uh, find the core outlet 
uh, temperature and end a value of two degree to the measurement before the measurement go to the PI controller. Uh, so the PI controller will, will um, take the uh, modified input as uh, input to make the decision based on. So the basically the PI controller receives the temperature reading and compares to the set point and then issues a command to, to the valve, I'm sorry, to the valve um, to, to control the flow rate. So this uh, malicious code uh, could uh, make the PI controller to issue uh, false, uh, false control. And uh, then at time 1200, the whole system start uh, uh, running with this uh, malicious code. So um, here I want to uh, talk about two different types of false in data injection that uh, attackers can uh, do, uh, showing this figure, depending on if the attackers are still in the system when the false data injection is conducted. So uh, the first type is showing this purple one uh, that attacker used to man the middle attack to access the system and then perform the false data injection. So all the time the attacker is in the system. And the second um, scenario is this point here where the attacker performs the man the middle attack and then left the system, but uh, the in attacker injected um, malware which conducts a false data injection to change the temperature set point or change the RTD readings as demonstrated in this <coughs> scenario. Excuse me. Um, so this scenario shows the value of the process data uh, because even row, row let's say uh, the module two or module one uh, uh, detected the network discovery here and then or even detect the mine in the middle here but since later the <clears throat> operator says the malicious IP is not in the in the system anymore or the uh, operator kicked out the attacker and then operator may think the whole system is safe but actually the malware is still there to perform the false in that, uh, data injection. So here shows the value of the process data uh, because the cy cyber data could miss something that process data could be able to see. So now let's look at the results from the module two, which applies on supervised learning on the network flow data. Um, so this is the raw data under the main, the middle attack and uh, we can, and this uh, pink block is the duration of the attack happened. So we can see from the raw data, uh, you, we can't distinguish the cyber attack and the normal operation because they kind of look same. And then after we apply the uh, machine learning algorithm and apply a filter, we can see from here that the uh, model picked the cyber attack perfectly here and uh, there's no false alarm here. So um, this sub figure shows the uh, detection results where one means it is attack and zero means it's a, a normal operation. So we can see the, uh, the model gives a great uh, detection. So we also did the um, we also tested the model too with a normal data set so we can see there's a no false alarm, which is good. And we also applied unsupervised uh, machine learning to module three. Uh, we applied several different uh, machine learning algorithms and uh, the auto associative support vector regression gives the best results. So here I only displaying the result from uh, this method. So again, um, again, the red box is the time of the duration of the attack. And uh, we have um, five temperature sensors are being tested and we can see the algorithm again picked the cyber attack um, effectively. So we can see that uh, both module two and module three are effective. So, 
now uh, let me conclude my this research. A novel cybersecurity solution platform for ICS was pro Post, which contains five subsystems to perform cybersecurity functions with a defense in depth concept. And it combines the cyber and process data to provide a wide attack detection coverage and promote collaboration between IT and OT teams. And the cyber attack detection system contains three modules to perform supervised and unsupervised detection for both known and unknown cyber attacks. So it has the ability to detect the zero day attacks. And a real time ICS test bed was built uh, with a realistic mockup by a real physical facility and a SCADA system and a local every network and three different types of attack scenarios are conducted uh, towards the testbed, uh, man the middle attack, DOS attack, and a false data injection attack to demonstrate that uh, you can conduct an attack to the system and also collect the data under attack to develop the uh, cyber attack detection system. Uh, so this system was developed using machine learning algorithms uh, and based on four types of data, three cyber types, uh, three types of cyber data and uh, the process data. And uh, I have demonstrated the value of the process data. And the results of the detection system shows the effectiveness of this defense in depth concept, where if the cyber data means that the cyber attack, the process data still has the potential to, to uh, catch the cyber attack. Yeah, uh, that's all my uh, seminar. Thank you. Um, feel free to ask any question. Um, not really a question, but kind of a comment. So Stuxnet was really interesting to me because I remember like some, some days I would just like look up, ooh, I wonder what interesting like cyber attacks there are. And that was one that really caught my eye because it was kind of, wasn't it like a cyber weapon deployed by either supposedly the United States, they don't really know for sure, but cyber weapon. And it was kind of like the first um, cyber warfare really, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so that also shows why we need to, you know, enhance the cybersecurity because not just uh, the unintended cyber uh, incident would happen, but if there is uh, like a nation-based, nation-sponsored attack, that could be very severe. Like so espionage and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, hopefully my research could add some value uh, to enhance the cybersecurity of uh, critical infrastructures. So, you know, the power grid, power plant, or water treatment plant, food process plant, so things like that. Which, because when they built, they, there were no cybersecurity consideration uh, in that time, because most of them built like 20 or 10 years ago by that time you know, there are not too much cyber attacks or abilities, but now with all the digital technologies uh, increasing and, uh, um, you know, access of the knowledge is easier. So there are even some uh, people just, or attacker just uh, interested to test if the, the he or she can do some attack. Uh, and also because the cyber attack um, has you can consider it as kind of like low cost because you know it's might be like hard to to catch and uh, uh, might require less resource than a physical attack. So, like since Stuxnet was there, because I know it was the reason it was kind of so uh, it caught everyone's eye because it was it was so sophisticated compared to anything they'd seen at the time. Uh, in terms of today. Has there been anything like close to that level of uh, like sophisticated? So I think the uh, attack to the Ukraine power grid is also very sophisticated. Yeah, because there are also other, you know, attempt to power, attack power grid, but most of them are handled. Yeah. When was that? Uh, 2016. 16. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? 
Um, so that, that uh, Ukraine power grid attack, like kind of just real briefly, I don't know if you talked about that, but kind of what happened there. Yeah, so they developed uh, this malware and uh, uh, it's kind of like very sophisticated and it's not like too much detail uh, uh, unveiled. So the malware uh, uh, attacked uh, the power grid. So it caused uh, about six hour uh, station blackout and also uh, that is like the first version of the malware and the second time it was in 2018 it attacked the I believe it's 2018 uh, it attacked the Ukraine power grid again and caused some issue again so this I believe is a kind of like a um, station sponsored war Oh, sorry. Last question. Um, just because it came into my head. Oh, unless some is someone else going. Uh, I don't know. I, I have no okay. idea. If, yeah, if uh, anyone is trying to ask questions, I guess not. Cause, okay, ahead. this is my last one. I promise. Um, <laughs> what about uh? In, so in terms of like across industry, have you ever seen? So like, what about aerospace communications? So like, you know, like air traffic control and like, uh, um, you know, radio communications. Have you ever seen any uh, cyber, I mean, well, I guess, I don't know how that would be cyber attacks, but have you ever seen like attacks there? Uh, not really, no. Uh, I didn't see any of them I reported, right? Uh, Cause if it's aerospace, it's kind of uh, shield from mm. outside, I believe. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. If there are no more questions, thank you so much for her, for presenting. I know that we have some people in here who are studying cybersecurity, either for their graduate program or their summer research. So I hope that this was very useful to them. Um, could you send that video that you took to me so I could share that? Because the volume sure. is a little low. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. So uh, I just want in the end present my. Uh, email contact again it's just fan utk.edu if there are any uh, further interest or question or anything you want to talk with me feel free to shoot me an email thank you thank you thank you, thank you. i'm going to stop recording